Hey, and I want to make a video on subjects concerning value and how um, suffering and pain and whatever feeling has value regardless of another sentient being there, another person being there to acknowledge your suffering. You don't need another person um, to be there to acknowledge suffering that you're going through. It just needs to exist on its own. Um, yeah, I've mentioned this plenty of times before. Um, it doesn't need to be validated by anyone else because it's being validated by the person experiencing it. It often confuses me how many people think that you need to have another person there to, um, another person outside the person suffering to um, validate the suffering, make it, I don't necessarily say validate it or validate it, it's a very existence. Yeah, that you're validating its existence by you acknowledging it to you, but regardless of you being there and validating it for that person, that person is still experiencing the suffering regardless of your existence or your acknowledgement of it or not. Um, it's something that exists regardless of um, you being there because it requires a sentience to exist to begin with. And it's suffering that's made by value based on the feelings of a sentient being. So it requires the existence of someone regardless of another sentience being there because it needs a sentience to make the value. Not something outside of the one experiencing it, but the very experience is created by sentience. And the same thing with your reaction, um, the validation you're giving, it's an experience you're experiencing. And, that experience has value, but anything innately um, has innate value if it's a sentient being, because therefore it has feelings, or it has some kind of emotion, or it has some kind of state where it can feel good or bad, and that's the very definition of um, the value, um, the intrinsic value when it comes to experiencing any kind of um, feeling, either positive or negative. So it's something that exists regardless of the existence of someone else. Um, outside of the, per, um, the sentience or the um, being experiencing the pain. It exists regardless. It doesn't need someone else to acknowledge it for it to exist because it still exists regardless because it wouldn't be able to be acknowledged by someone else if it didn't already exist on its own. So it's something that exists um, despite you acknowledging it or being there or any of that stuff. So it doesn't really matter. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and another thing I want to touch upon um, is motivation. Just because people um, have the ability to be motivated to um, motivated and have the ability to care, um, it doesn't mean it takes them for a value exchange or a value um, con condition to exist that exists regardless of the. Um, just because, like I say, a motivation, just because they have the ability to, to acknowledge it doesn't mean that that's going to change it. Um, or that's going to change the fact that it, um, someone, uh, that a sentience is feeling something. Um, but I'm just trying to think of exactly what, what I was meaning when I uh, mentioned this. But motivation, caring, um, it takes a certain degree, obviously, it takes another sentience to have a motivation or care. That's one of the, another defining characteristic of being a sentient, and that's motivation and caring and all these emotions and these um, <coughs> psychological states, emotional states, these feelings, these um, biases or whatever it may be, these predispositions, um, requires another sentient being. And just because they have the motivation and ability to care does not mean it takes them for a value to exist. It exists regardless, um, regardless of them being there or not. Um, and them acknowledging it or caring isn't something that changes unless it's something that changes based on that. Um, the caring leads to some kind of effect on the person experiencing the sentience. Obviously, the person's caring if they're the one suffering. Um, the negative condition or whatever condition they are, they're obviously in the process of caring because they're in the middle of it. Um, but obviously that's where um, difficulties between language and obviously our emotions and our cognitive um, logical awareness of the environment. We, we could say we don't care, but we're experiencing a good or bad state, but that doesn't mean we do or don't care. It just means that we're saying it. And like I said before, there's a difference between saying something and actually feeling something. And there is a disconnect logically between feeling something and you saying something. You said something, but that doesn't mean it's exactly the truth. It's just a um, another fact that's manifested itself through the um, through existence based on um, cause and effect interaction based on a reaction to a certain to a certain um, thing happening and that's really all there is is just reaction to these kinds of things anyway.
Um, yeah. Um, sorry, I'm just reading the notes. I want to make sure I get the um, point across as good as I can. Um, so forgive me for any pauses. I need to make sure I'm getting covering everything thoroughly enough. So po apologies for any waiting that I'm causing anyone. You can always skip ahead and do that. Um, but yeah, just because um, um, it doesn't need a motivation. Just it doesn't need a motivation um, on another person's part for you to have feelings. Um, it doesn't take a motivation or a care. Um, regardless of a person feeling something, it's something that exists um, intrinsically, and it needs a. Obviously, suffering is like it needs a um, a host um, that already has the ability to suffer to um, have that suffering. So it's something that exists regardless of you acknowledging it, you being there, you not feeling anything. Your subjective point of view, your subjective position, your whatever it may be. Like I've mentioned before. Yes, it's a subjective position, but it's a subjective position based on something that exists in reality. It obviously, you have your little boundaries, and it's just an illusion where all this subjective stuff exists. Um, delusions, your values, all these things that don't have any intrinsic value, that aren't tangible. Those are the things that you can say. Um, you can. Those are the things that you can say have... Um, um, are subjective, but they exist regardless. There's a certain thing in reality um, called physics, interaction, physical interaction, that causes these things to happen, to cause an effect chain to happen. There's something there that's causing all of this stuff to happen in reality, regardless. It's something that exists um, at at least a fundamental level physically that's causing this illusion of what we call subjectivity in our psychology projection and what we project subjectively, it's something that comes from somewhere and it's objectively happening. It's caused from something. And just because it's a projection doesn't mean it can be um, subjective. It's just, it's subjective um, based on um, our own likes, but it's objective because it exists as a fact. It's, you know, you could say I like um, a certain food, but that doesn't mean that it's not a fact that that certain food is something that you like. Yes, you like it, and that's different from other people. Just because it's different from someone else's likes doesn't mean that it's not an objective truth. It just means it's different. It's it's objectively different. I've mentioned that before. They like this, you like that. Um, you like pizza, they like um, they like plain bread. It doesn't make much of a difference. Yeah, it's you have an opinion, and it's subjective based on your own little your character and all these things that you happen to be predisposed to your experience, but your experience existed. It's just objectively different. It's nothing more, nothing less. Um, so yeah, that's that's. there's no contention there. That shouldn't be much of an issue when it comes to realizing that kind of stuff. Um, so, so I have written here like caring fixes a problem and more than the problem existing on its own without care it's the care yeah it doesn't need care for it to exist the caring doesn't fix the problem unless the caring leads to something um, fixing the problem it can have an effect there's a um, uh, an eight or whatever it may be um, causality if a person cares they're more likely to do something about it um, so there is a um, um, correlation or causation when it comes to caring it's something that can have an effect but in on its own caring and motivation and these kinds of things don't change it so sort of like your motivation since you have your own looking from another point of view you have a motivation you have the ability to care or not care doesn't mean it's not existing um, you have a motivation I'm just trying to remember why I want to go with this the subject because I know it was leading somewhere it was another very vague idea um, it's something that was um, having to do with subjective point of view and how that um, has an effect on, or it doesn't have an effect, but explains why. I know this, the, um, it's not rational to say why it doesn't exist regardless of your perception. Because it does exist regardless of your perception. It's something that is there. Um,
Yeah, I can. The care can aid in the solution to the um to whatever you're dealing with. It doesn't. It doesn't deal with the problem directly. Like I've said, the care itself is just not another idea that can another emotional reaction or a reaction or a not necessarily emotional but a rational reaction that can lead to a solution. And just because we have motivation doesn't mean that it doesn't exist outside of us. So we have a motivation. We have a motivation to either acknowledge it or not acknowledge it. It doesn't need us to be fixed, and it doesn't um, um, need us to exist either. It doesn't need our motivation for it to exist. Um, it doesn't need a motivating desire or a motivating care. Um, just trying to get to the bottom of the idea I was trying to get to begin with. Trying to talk my way into remembering it, see if I can help me. Um, but yes, it doesn't need. Um, it doesn't just because we're ones that have motivations and caring. Um, reiterating the same point, yes, again and again. It doesn't need us for it to exist. Um, we're not necessary. Our, uh, an outside emotion is not needed for an act of suffering or an act of any kind of um, feeling to exist. It exists because it has to have a host of a feeling thing to begin with, and that's itself what gives it its desire, um, its value. Um, not someone else, unless obviously it's you experiencing your own pain. Um, we're not the solution to a problem just because we have the motivation. The problem exists regardless, and we're not necessarily the, the solution. It doesn't need us. Um, it doesn't need us to yes prove that it exists on its own. It's something that exists regardless. Um, so, um, it doesn't doesn't need um, huh. mm, that doesn't need us to exist. Um, regardless of that, anyway, um, I think that's enough for one video. I think I've made my point. If I need to add anything else, there's always another chance in another video. Um, so, and anyway, until next time, if I have anything else to mention, I'll mention it in another video. So, thank you, and until next time, bye.